This week on Hermitcraft. I have an idea and I just feed it into the yellow box and then what I want actually spits out something gorgeous I never could have done. But half the time is completely <laughs> wrong as well. Welcome to the Hermitcraft Recap. My name is Pixorifs. Our writer is Loy XP. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. And we owe a huge congratulations to the Hermits, whose charity marathon and auction in support of gamers outreach last weekend raised close to one million dollars. Combined with the event last year, the Hermitcraft community's total is way over a million. Also, shout out to that one person who bid a thousand dollars for 12 actual bamboo, you mad lad. The charitable giving doesn't end there, since the Scarland art book is now pre-ordering, with all proceeds after production going to the non-profit organization Give Kids the World Village. You can find details over at scarlandartbook.com if you want to own a unique piece of Hermitcraft history. In the meantime, a Minecraft server still exists, so let's take a look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. Starting with Smallish Beans, who, while everyone is away for charity, gets right to not beating the manic allegations and play pretends conversations with the friends he's missing. Hello, Green. How are you doing? Sorry, sir. I'm going to have to put you on hold. No. Got a nice train you have here. Why, or thank you, Joel. Why do I sound like... Mickey Mouse. Hello, Tango. 100% just poop my pants. But as hilarious as the Oops All Beans version of Hermitcraft is, he is not alone on this server. Unless it was also him who mailed in a Joel Brickhead statue and signed it Etho. Joel appreciates the gift so much, he puts two copies of the design at the foot of his Tory gate and also graffitis Impulse's wall while he's there. Go, that's quite cute. For a different kind of statue, Joel also constructs a tribute to his and LD Shadow Lady's characters from back in Empire Season 1, from the time she was a few feet taller than him and most things on the server. Turn around and tell me what you think. Because I'm a little oh, shark king. Oh, look at my little axe and little tail. <laughs> yeah, is that my butt? No, it's like a dress. Is that my butt cheeks? Big salmon this, big wood that. Joel is clearly in the pocket of big wife. Though he too dips his feet into the sea of commerce and adds his own glowberry shop to the market street right next to Stress's end rod shop, where it will at least get a little lit up compared to how helpful glowberries are in that regard. Comparatively, Corallis builds what may as well be a light update suppressor at his villa. It's the return of the nightclub design he's built before, but this time it's in a lush cave, and the bar actually lets you mix drinks. Corallis has the brewing stand behind the bar rig to actually seamlessly add ingredients of your choosing without you having to rummage through the cupboards. This is a design by Rickstone. There it is, so portion of night vision, okay? I do this, I press this button, it's gonna take some time. Bam. His own redstone knowledge comes in when he rigs up a tennis court in the back of his villa, where you can actually bump an armor stand back and forth with a knockback sword in a game resembling volleyball and not tennis. Azuma helps test it out, and they agree it would work better if gravity on the thing was weaker, so a better ball would maybe be an immortal chicken. I guess the idea is there, right? Ooh! Hmm. This at least is a game Azuma can't just use his rapid fire mouse trick on. Though it is not much of a trick in the first place, as it turns out, he really is just tapping the button real fast. Only difference is he's using the other hand for it. Corrales figured out what it was. It's because I play guitar. Well, cool. That was a lot of fun. It's a cool little game. GG on it? your win. Though his newest farm won't need him right clicking at all. The azalea powered rooted dirt farm very much runs itself, as long as you're letting a TNT duper go unsupervised. It even makes quite a bit of oak while at it. The large supply of artisanal ground is then channeled into the docking gate at the end of the general row of shops. Yes, they are gatekeeping dirt now. But the biggest expansion to the commercial lane is the Wool Street Azuma and Zedaf decide to become wolves of, which is an actual street with actual wool, so we can expect them to now turn into actual wolves. For now though, it's a simple pop-up stand. I really liked, like the simplicity, but there's just enough detail here it to look really cool. Azuma actually sets up a stall for every color of wool, future-proofing it for when they can get a hold of other pattern holders. To maintain the server's colorful palette, False Symmetry digs into the base of her base. Call that a basement. Naturally, being the CEO, concrete executive officer, False can't be seen manually mixing the waters into the cement and builds a TNT duper-powered concrete converter with the foundation walls around it, so no one can tell what it is that's shaking her house and the neighborhood. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so yeah, let me fill this all up and uh, I'll see what else I can do about making a little bit extra, but... Hypnotized has been blasting through his editing backlog. His latest video catches you up on the general shenanigans we already had the pleasure of catching you up on. Like that time Scar... Let's go! Oh, oh, or the time Cub Fan and the Dragon. Yes, oh, nice. Yay. Nice. Nice. 
life. Or when Azuma and Ren were digging a hole and... You ran out of books, you had to go to your next door neighbor who happened to be employed as a scribe and he would get into the best <laughs> ink and uh, write it out on ink the fun. finest papyrus. <laughs> Likewise, iJevin gives us the highlights of them. Him and a few other hermits got to partake in as part of the charity event, despite being unable to make it there in person. You know, while everyone who did make it is too jet lagged to tell. Wow. <laughs> very, very cool. Right. I don't know, I thought it was yours a few days ago. Yeah, I, I could have sworn it was I different. Really like I mean, <laughs> the festivities actually left him with unique player heads from people who otherwise wouldn't be showing up to the server, which Jevin is happy to sell to the highest bidder. But in the meantime, he works hard to build up the medieval village he calls home, which was not at all a village either, and now has a network of paths and a functional smithy. So this will be Skyrim soon enough. You just wait. Uh, I think we're probably going to be able to put like quite a few buildings into here, but I just wanted to connect everything and get everything together. There is a different reason for Cubfan135 to get bumped off a mountain with his goat horn permit. Over the span of his video, Cub farms up a collection of shaped protein keratin and binds a good half of it to Hermitcraft voice clips. They've actually started running into each other, and now they they will just simply drop horns now. As a reminder, the server allows players to play custom sounds out of goat horns and music discs, so Cub here has now assembled what is essentially an in-game YouTube poop engine. I'm a smart behipano. You can nook without cranny, but you, you best not be cranny in nook free. Oh no no! He builds a shop with a giant goat horn pixel art and a sign saying horns in front of it, which is so on the nose, you'd think it's the rhinoceros parts he's selling. I declare poop my pants. Unintentional as it is, Gemini Tay might actually help him gather the sound bites on the rest of the gang, as she takes half the episode off to go check in on her server mates and even partakes in a game of questions and answers with XP Crafted. Uh, what has been your favorite project or build or event or combination of all three since joining her craft? This is so hard. And obviously there's a Rivermeister false symmetry visit in order after Jem makes her giant skull literally cry rivers. Yeah, it's actually weird how quickly that adds to it. I mean, that's literally pretty much just mossy cobblestone, but it looks cool. We Week 10 brings a much needed relief to the mechanizators of Hermitcraft as Tango Tech finally starts his redstone shop after absconding with both of the redstone permits. The much needed components are to be distributed out of a steaming factory on the outskirts of the commercial district where each product of his actual all redstone crafting machine will be proudly displayed and demonstrated, so even the people who don't yet know how to redstone will eventually get educated until they become clients. <laughs> I love it. We'll do it again. We'll do it again. <laughs> completely useless, completely ridiculous. Tango christens it to Tech Delay, which is awfully brave, because maybe you don't want to associate the word delay with a shop that already took 10 weeks to show up. Put a lot of time into detailing this, which I definitely do not have time for right now. Continuing the it's about time theme, Grian figures he is too tired of the inconvenient government work a bit, and in a surprise twist considering it's basically pranking everyone on every other day of the year, declares April 1st, the day the Hermitcraft permit office gets something accomplished for once. Go Great. on then. Go on then, let's have Be a look. Wow. Life's never been so easy. I love the <laughs> permit office. I'm coming back next April 1st. Thank you so much, Brian. See you next year, Joel. As a result, Joel gets his Glow Ink replica permit, Pearl her much-desired endstone, and Scar finally gets the license to sell mobs. Filled out that form? Yes, sir. I have. I... Okay, the only relevant question is the first one, so... Though Pearl has never even been to the permit office before, so perhaps it leaves the wrong first impression. The catch, of course, is that in exchange for new permits given, Scar and Pearl have to surrender a paper of equal value to then be auctioned to the highest bidder. With that, the quota for productivity is done for the next year, and Green departs to take care of his own permits. Though with time rapidly running out, he can only finish one wall of his mushroom and red sandstone alleyway before what we assume is a charity fairy swooped him for a trip to Gamers Outreach. I wish B-Dubs was online right now so he could tell me what went wrong with this build. With his animal handling license in hand, Scar is about ready to handle the animals. So the crown performance of his circus train becomes him taming the ferocious chest monster. To accommodate all of his things that aren't displayed on his front porch as a giant mountain, Scar builds a freight car at the back of the train and brings it to life with animal heads sticking out of their enclosure. So we're going to finish the train. We're going to see if we can squeeze in a bit of a caboose in the back and finally start on my first shop. The real reason Pearlescent Moon was one of the first in line at the permit office was to receive the official blessing to sell stamps to the server. After sticking around through Scar's application process to get bonus permits for Purpur and Endstone, she returns to the task of stocking something she had the permits for already, flowers and dyes. 
The seeds from her sniffer farm start growing in the solarium, but having heard rumors of Corallus' extremely productive flower farm, Pearl swings by to ask if she can make a deal. One third. What? And 50% of the dice. For your side, yes. Three, two, two one. Two thirds me. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is a robbery. She perhaps didn't count on Corallus having imprisoned an eldritch nightmare to farm some of the flowers, but there's no sign of dark magic in the farm truck she sets up to sell the produce out of, unless that pig somehow turns out to be the devil. Well, as per Skizzly's suggestion. Rendog treats us to some classic Rendog building and storytelling as he works on paths and walls around his exoplanetary base area. In which we learn that a wall convinced him to become an entertainer, he may have been responsible for some South African crop circles, and that he was infamous for going out of bounds at boarding school. Next he'll be telling us he did a sequence break and a credit skip to end up at university. You know, I caused a lot of stress on this day. I probably shouldn't have done any of uh, any adventuring at all. <laughs> Either way, the thematic builds are coming together nicely, and if the map is to be believed, you can see them from space. With servermates impatient to make a withdrawal from the cyberpunk city's XP banks, Impulse SV steps up and works on the redstone for what he's already dubbed the Bop and Go XPMs. Fortunately, Skizzleman is around to stand in for the audience while Impulse explains the machinery, and to inspire the addition of a jingle, which makes for another confusing redstone diversion, but it's well worth it in the end. Yes! <laughs> so you're literally only going to hear it as you're standing here. Quartz has been selling like hotcakes, so Impulse also recruits a bunch of stonemasons to provide him with the blocks through trading. But we all know the real money can be found by convincing B-dubs to put his money where his mouth is. I told Impulse <laughs> on Discord I would give him $10,000 cash if he figured out how to put grass on nine... How did you do it? <laughs> XB Crafted, on the other hand, is trying to put money where everyone else's mouth is. With golden carrots and golden apples proving themselves the most popular sellers at Half Foods, XB sets up a gold farm designed by Blaze Dude and makes a few modifications of his own. Before long, the nuggets are flowing and anything he's dropped into the system can be reclaimed before it's burned in lava. I'm not keeping any of this or any of this or any of this. And then we should never have to go back there again, which is nice. At least this offsets the cost of generously reminding Corallus that netherite upgrades exist. But what about what about, what about what, that? What, best friend ever. I didn't know that that didn't exist. That I'm so good at this game. <laughs> I should, I should not, you know what? I should, I should not even be allowed on the Hermitcraft server. And finally, there's Joe Hills, who gets a surprising windfall in the form of multi-shot books, which aren't usually the most sought-after enchantments, but then people don't usually spend much time shooting fireworks at their friends or the Ender Dragon. Fortunately, the entire server has a tendency to be a little extra, and all eight dragon fights are a pretty colourful affair. Three shulkers of books gets you three multi-shot, so one in 27 is what it feels like. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll see you in about 25 minutes at the end. And that's about it for this week's recap. Our writer is Lee XP, and my name is Pixel Rips. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. Don't forget to leave a like while you're still here, and subscribe so you won't miss future recaps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.